and welcome back to Migration, Season 2, Episode 13. Today, I'm going to zero in on exactly what it is that I'm pointing to when I refer to consciousness and the filters that are funneling that larger, non-localized, pure awareness down into a trickle of awareness. The dynamics that shut our natural, enlightened state of being into tunnel vision. That which is, moment by moment, blinding us to our godlike nature. I use the term narrative to describe these filters a lot on this show when I talk about our internal dialogue, our memories, and our emotions. You know, even a song that won't stop playing in the back of your head is acting in a small way to organize the chaos in your mind and keep you tethered to the context of your daily world. And it is so important that we have a clear understanding of these dynamics because they are the obstacles guarding our natural right to reclaim lucidity in our dreams and our daily life. And this can get confusing. We, we were born into this system and we're still blinded by it, even though some of us are waking up. So we're going to explore a great metaphor that might help clear up some of these confusions. This is going to be the last episode in season two, and I'm going to be doing some traveling very soon, so we will return very shortly for season three. Keep in mind that I divide these into seasons just to help organize all of this here on my channel and be sure from time to time I'm reevaluating what needs to change and what direction this needs to go in next. And for that process, I consult the only source I trust, pure consciousness. I'll talk a little about, uh, about what I have planned for season three at the end of the episode. But before we continue, I do have a request from you. I'd like to do an episode where I just take questions you have at this point. Preferably, it would be best if you've been keeping up a at least a little bit with this series, uh, just so that you're not asking something I've already addressed on the show. So uh, if you do, that's fine. Uh, just know that I'm not brushing you off if I point you to another video I've already done uh, where I've already answered that question. You can put those questions in the comments below or you can send me an email. I'll add that email in the description. But for now, get comfortable, smoke them if you got them, and get ready for today's episode of Migration. favorite metaphors that describes how I see consciousness and how it gets tied up with ego and our limitations. I want you to imagine a Japanese lantern, giant paper sphere with a light at the center. And I want you to imagine that paper shade surrounding the light is filled with thousands upon thousands of pinholes. Each pinhole is just slightly different from the rest. In this metaphor, the light source, or the bulb, is pure consciousness. Now what do I mean by that? When I say pure consciousness, I'm not talking about thoughts, or memories, or instincts, or even emotions. I'm not referring to your sense of self, your desires, or your beliefs. I'm referring to that which is forever observing those factors. Because just like we can point to any object around us and observe it, we can point to our thoughts as well, or we can point to our emotions. We can say, I just had a thought, which implies an object, the thought, and also that I, which is observing that thought. They are not one in the same. When you refer to your deepest self, when you say, I am so-and-so, you're referring to an awareness behind all of the activity of the mind, even before your name. So when I say this light, this single source of light is pure consciousness, I'm talking about the core of awareness, raw observation, before it has identified itself with a body, with a name, with a linear story or a context. 
Now, the shade surrounding that light is thought, and every shape thought takes of language, memories, hopes, dreams, these pinholes are the conscious beings of the universe, at least those of us with a sense of ego. And here's where the confusion began. It seems that the very dynamic of having this pure awareness passing through these various pinholes creates a false connection, a sense of identity, not with the source from which it's emanating from, but with the edges of the paper it's passing through. You are that light passing through a pinhole in the fabric of thought that has confused itself with the details of its edges. Everything about your identity and the story of your life is bound up in pointing to the unique edges of that pinhole and declaring, that's me. I'm unique. I'm special. When you look around you, you see other pinholes, other egos. In other words, you only see the differences, the different shapes each pinhole takes. This mistake is the ultimate source of suffering in this world. Now, of course, every once in a while, someone wakes up and realizes, wait a minute, I'm not the edges around me. I am not this limited tunnel vision that I keep experiencing. I'm that light, that awareness passing through this pinhole. And when you see that, you start to see how we're all the same light poking through this veil that dims that source of consciousness at the center. And then you start seeing how much we're all the same. Getting you to that point is the ultimate goal of all of my work. When you begin merging with that truth that you are the consciousness at the heart of everything, you will go through a very strange process where you no longer identify yourself with your thoughts, with, with your story, even with your body, and you stop looking at other people as if they're their own ego as well. And sometimes the people around you may not know what to make of this process you're going through. You may start sounding crazy to them. You may even find a stronger bond with people you never expected. And you, you may find some relationships fall apart altogether because they were based on you identifying and being limited and trapped by your internal dialogue and theirs. When you stop taking yourself so seriously, you'll stop taking other people terribly seriously. And often their ego uh, will not like that at all. And that's it. That is the basic model I wanted to introduce in this last episode today. So we're keeping it simple. We're, we're going to swing back around to this Japanese lantern model over and over because it's really useful to illustrate so many of these concepts. And I guarantee the more you think about this metaphor, the more you're going to see how many other truths about your own life you can pull out of this model. But also keep in mind, it's only a model. It can never reflect the actual dynamics behind consciousness and identity. It's, it's too abstract to be captured quite so easily. And so, of course, as always, please like and subscribe. That really does help grow this channel so other people can get at this information. And when I come back, uh, we'll be on season three, where I hope to dive into your questions as we discussed. But also we're going to talk about what anxiety and depression is within this model we're building of consciousness. I want to illustrate some of my stranger personal experiences with astral projection and some of the weirder places I've been. I'd like to talk about some common themes we see in Eastern medicine and the New Age movements like chakras and using mantras. In the meantime, please add any comments or questions below. I, I'm trying to get around to everyone. If you if you reach out to me with questions that uh, something that's confusing about something I've said or or even just a comment, I I will try to address all of them. And I really appreciate your support so far on this channel. You most of you guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. So uh, until next time, thanks so much. Peace be with you. Take care. Bye bye.